Right. So, <clears throat> inshallah, for today, we are going to finish off with uh, this chapter, uh, Optical Properties. This is a very short chapter. Um, the key importance of uh, the optical properties um, in properties of material is because whenever we produce a material, um, we might notice that some materials, uh, for example, metals, uh, it gives some reflections. We can see ourselves. I mean, if uh, it has been polished or what, then uh, we can see reflections. Or imagine that if you uh, like uh, put this material on a source, uh, for example, like light source or any sorts of um, maybe rays uh, source, like X rays. Uh, uh, infrared or whatsoever, um, the behavior uh, of this um, material to actually have a sort of a transmission, um, absorbance, or probably uh, reflectance. So all these are actually related to their so-called optical properties. So issues that uh, will be addressed, of course, what phenomenon uh, Occur when light is shine on a material. Okay, uh, some materials, if let's say that it is transparent, eh, you can see uh, any objects behind uh, the materials that you put in front. If it is translucent, it means that you cannot see the object clearly at the other side, but uh, the lights eh, uh, can actually penetrate and uh, can go through this material. So this is actually called translucent. And we do have another one that we call it as opaque. Opaque means the material that doesn't um, give any like trans uh, uh, penetration of light. And also uh, we cannot observe, we cannot see the object behind these opaque materials. So what determines the characteristic colors of material? Um, I think we are fortunate. Uh, we are not colorblind. I'm not sure maybe some of you, if you have been affected with colorblind. But have you ever uh, think why actually when we look at certain object, we can see different colors, uh, green, yellow, orange, red, or whatsoever. So this actually, um, I think, um, have some close relation with optical properties because we know that uh, we can see uh, the colors of the object because we have a source of light. So the light actually have a wavelength and when it goes or when it actually shines to the object, the object will uh, reflect and the reflection of rays that captured by our eyes, our naked eyes, uh, it depends on the wavelength and finally uh, that actually being translated into different uh, color. So that is why you can see purple, you can see pink or whatsoever. And why are some materials transparent and others are translucent or opaque? So these things will be addressed <coughs> in this chapter. So a basic concept in optical properties, we know that for a solid metals, okay, um, the optical properties that they may uh, give is actually reflection, absorption, and transmission. Okay, so most of bulk solids are thick enough that visible light, uh, when temperature is equal to zero, or transmission, not really uh, temperature, but transmission is equal to zero. Okay, and for transparent solid, okay, the uh, reflections, absorbance. Uh, transmission and refraction, eh? pembelawan, refraction. Dia bukan pantulan, pembelawan, refraction, in Malay. Okay. So you, maybe you have seen this experiment, it's quite famous. We have one incident, one type of source, white color, light, that when it goes into a prism, so it will be refracted, okay, dibelaukan, eh? it will be refracted, okay, Refracted means that the light will be fractionate according to the density of the materials that have been penetrated. So that is why you will see that the refraction causes a different color uh, as also. It produces 
uh, a rainbow color. Okay. So similar things, when you have an incident that goes into an object, there's a possibility that a few percentage of it will be transmitted. Some will be absorbed and some will be refracted. Okay. And this actually creates uh, a phenomenon that calls uh, probably related to optical properties. For optical properties, light have both particulate and wave-like characteristic. Okay, so that is why for photons, photon is actually a quantum unit of a light. And this is actually a very famous equation that you've seen. Even you learn this in physics. So this is actually proposed by Einstein. Uh, maybe you seen this a lot. E is equal to H nu or E is equal to HC over lambda. Okay. This is actually to calculate uh, the speed of light or whatsoever. Okay. Uh, so using this um, formula, we can actually relate it with the optical properties because we know that E is actually the energy of a photon. H nu, eh? H is actually Planck constant, 6.6, .6, 2 times 10 power of minus 34. And then uh, nu, eh? uh, nu is actually the... Um, uh, the frequency of radiation. So this is also equivalent to HC. So C is actually speeds of light over lambda. And lambda is actually the wavelength of radiation. The definition of refraction, reflection, absorption and transmission. Refraction is actually due to the photons loses some of its energy after interact with the material and changes its direction. Okay. So for index of refraction N, it is actually to relate the changes in velocity and direction of radiation as it passes through a transparent medium also known as refractive index. So in order to uh, observe the optical properties of any materials, part of it is to calculate or to find the refractive index. For example, if you produce glass, eh, different types of glass, colored glass, opaque glass, or ornamented glass, okay, uh, it is actually important to know what will be the uh, refractive index of this material. And how to calculate that? Index of refraction N is equal to C0 over C. Okay, or it is also equivalent to uh, lambda in vacuum over lambda. So as I said, uh, C is actually the uh, frequency and lambda is actually the wavelength. Okay. Reflectivity is actually the percentage of incident re radiation that is refracted. And linear absorption coefficient, alpha, it actually describes the ability of a material to absorb radiation. Okay. And other than that, we also have another term called dispersion. Dispersion is actually the variation of the refractive index with wavelength. So that is why I think dispersion is equals to the changes of N, the changes of refraction, refractive index over changes of wavelength. And finally, we have transmission. Transmission means that the fraction of beam that is not refracted or absorbed by the material. So it is not either being absorbed or refracted, but normally it's just been uh, thing transmitted back eh, into the other sides. For refraction, transmitted light distort electron cloud. So if there is no transmitted light, so you can see that the electron cloud uh, is not distort. It's just like um, I think uh, permanently stays like that. But if there is a transmission of light, then what happens is that the electron cloud will start to distort and this actually cause uh, the, uh, the, the, the light from the source transmit to the object. The velocity of a light in the material is lower than a vacuum. Okay, So another alternative, we might see that N as an index of refraction is equivalent also to the velocity of light in vacuum over the velocity of light in a medium. Adding a large iron 
or large heavy metals eh, to a glass will decrease the speed of light in the glass. So this actually have a reason because you might see um, colored glass, eh? colored glass or ornamented glass with a color. If you go to church or maybe uh, inside the mosque, you will see ornamented glass eh? as a decoration. You might imagine how does this ornamented glass is being produced because we know that glass is produced from uh, silica and also carbonates. But actually, <clears throat> what happened is that when you add a very dense material like uh, a dense heavy metal, lead or other types of metals inside the glass, when you do uh, the molting or the blowing process, what happens is that when you cool it, it will produce color. Okay? Right. So light can be bent as it passes through a transparent prism. So there is actually an effect of uh, refraction. And every material has its own refractive index. So that is why I think a typical glass, it has a very low uh, refractive index, 1.5 to 1.7. But when you add, I think, heavy metal like um, lead touch, eh? I think lead touch is a type of glass with the addition of lead oxide. It has a refractive index of 2.67. And even for diamond also, it has... Uh, refractive index 2.4 because of uh, a very high density uh, of glass produced. Light interaction with solids. So incident light is refracted, absorbed, scattered or even transmitted. So the overall incident actually is the sum of how much amount of the light being transmitted how much amount of light being absorbed, how much amount of light being refracted, and also how much amount of light being scattered. And as I actually explained earlier in uh, the introduction of this chapter, we might understand that the optical classification of material can be classes, class, uh, classified into three. So we have transparent, we also have translucent and also opaque. So what does it mean by transparent? So transparent means that you have an object that light and also uh, a light can penetrate through and the, the, uh, the material is also clear that you can see whatever object behind the material. Translucent, I think, uh, in turn, it means that this material actually can transmit light, but it cannot, we cannot see what actually object behind it because it starts to become slightly dense. Okay. And then finally, opaque. Uh, this one, I think, clearly, there's no uh, transmission, there's no observation from the other uh, sides of the material. So, examples for translucent, I think, simple uh, crystal, glass, or whatsoever. Okay, translucent, maybe I can give an example of a plastic material. And opaque, I guess, any hard materials that doesn't have any uh, possibility to be absorbed or transmit. Right. So we are looking at the one of the examples. So what are the energies of light with wavelength equals to 400 nanometers and 800 nanometers? What are their colors? Okay. So as I mentioned earlier also during uh, the definition things and uh, I think a basic introduction, we know that each color actually have uh, or produce different wavelengths. Okay, so in order to understand what will be the energy of light, uh, so we actually need to use the formula that we have looked just now. E is equal, I mean, equals to H C over lambda. We know that H is equal to six point six three times ten power of minus thirty four. C is actually speed of light three times ten power of eight, and lambda. Okay, so lambda. Uh, is given uh, at the different uh, values of 400, 800. Okay, so when you calculate for 400, you will get energy equal to 3.1, and if uh, lambda is equal to 800, then lambda is equals to 1.5. So what does this indicate? If you can see from the figures that I show you um, below, okay, if the energy value is higher, eh, then 
the wavelength will be slightly close to each other. I think it's quite, uh, quite intense. And in the end of the day, okay, you might see that uh, the color that it will produce is slightly darker. Higher um, E value, okay, high E value normally will give a more dark color. Okay. And if you have a less E value, then this one normally will produce a, a very light color or intense color. Okay, red, orange, yellow. Okay, so all these are actually the things. So you can actually see from here eh, the diagram uh, showing that different wavelengths will give a different visible light. And this actually will be situated under the visible light. So we can see color because it is located in the visible light region. If it's not, then if it goes into infrared, eh? uh, radio wave, x-rays, gamma rays. For adsorption, adsorption of photons by electron transmission. If we can actually uh, relate slightly with electrical properties, we might understand that um, for energy band diagram, eh, because we are talking about a transfer or uh, a promotion of electrons from valence band to conduction bands. So we have a source of energy that comes from either heating or also coming from light. So in this case for optical properties, of course the source will come from the incident light. Eh? So you have H nu that when it goes or when it penetrates to a certain material, so uh, the electron will be, uh, I think, promoted to a conduction band. So maybe you might heard about um, photoluminescence or glow in the dark material. Uh, any material, I think now watch also have a glow uh, in the dark material. You just put under the light and then after that, during dark, maybe you can see the color glows. What happens is that the energy is actually being absorbed. Okay, so when there is no supply of energy anymore, if you are not under the sun or under light source, okay, so what happens is that the energy that has been absorbed will be released. So when it releases, it produces, uh, I mean, it goes to the conduction band and it actually produces another uh, rays of energy, which actually we can see lights after that. Okay, and field electron states are adjacent to the field states. Near surface electron uh, absorb the visible light. Okay, so we are going to see this example more after this. Okay, so to characterizing adsorption, measuring transmit transmission as a function of wavelength and specimen thickness. So maybe we heard about Beer Lambert's law. I guess maybe you've learned this in KAT. Okay, KAT 247, uh, 245 or whatsoever. Uh, because I think you are doing experiment using absorbance, eh? UV, yes, to photometers. So all that actually, we know that you have a cuvette, you have a source of UV, and it will transmit to the material. So the solution or the material itself will be absorbed and it will release a different absorbance value. So different absorbance value will actually tell you um, the characteristic, the optical characteristic of this material. So in Beer Lambert's law, okay, the transmission uh, is equals to the transmission without specimen, okay, multiply or exponent to extension coefficient at each wavelength and also multiply with the thickness of the sample. Thickness of the sample, maybe if we are talking about UVVs, maybe you have run UVVs before. Uh, so the thickness of the cuvette or the quartz uh, cuvette that you've seen. Comparing materials classes based on alpha, okay, high actually for metals under most all wavelength and small for ceramics and also polymer. So what does it mean? It means that for a metallic uh, compound, normally you will have a higher alpha value. Okay? So alpha again is actually a, a coefficient, linear coefficient, eh? extension coefficient at wavelength. And normally the alpha value will be smaller for ceramics and polymer because of 
they are met, I mean, this material is mostly opaque and it doesn't uh, actually have a tendency to uh, refract and also uh, transmit. Reflection of lights for metals. Okay. Electron transition from an excited state produce a photon. Okay. So how actually uh, you can see a light that is being reflected when you actually, for example, you have a laser, laser light, and you have a metal. When you uh, put a laser on the metal, you will see that it will be reflected and you will see it as well. It is not penetrated through, but it's been reflected. So it happens that when you have a source, the same thing, you have a source, you have an incident, the electrons, okay, from the conducting or the conduction band will be, um, I think, uh, emitted or released uh, a photon, uh, which in the end, it is actually related to the refraction. Okay. So the downgrade of uh, electron energy yeah, uh, from the conduction band to the field band, this actually will produce uh, a refraction, uh, I mean, light emitted from the metal surface. Okay, so moving on. Reflection of lights for metals. Okay, reflectivity is equals to IR over I0 and it is actually in between 0 0.9 and 0 0.95. Metal surface will appear shiny and most of the adsorbed light is refracted, reflected at the same wavelength. So small fraction of light may be adsorbed and colored for re refracted lights depends on the wavelength distribution. For example, the metal, copper, and gold absorb light in blue and green. So it reflects lights that has a gold color. Okay. So reflectivity of a non-metal for normal incident and light passing into a solid having a uh, refractive index and is actually equals to n minus 1 over n minus or n plus 1 square. For example, for diamond, we know that uh, n is actually equals to 2.4. Then the reflectivity can be calculated as 2.41 minus 1 over 2.1 plus 1 square. Then you have a value around 0 0.17. So it's actually indicating that 70% of the light is actually being reflected. Okay. Another example, compare the re reflectivity okay, in silica glass that has N equal to 1.46 to that in pure lead oxide that has N equal to 2.6. Explain briefly why ornamented glassware have a smaller percentage of uh, lead oxide present. So, so the, the solution, I think uh, we need to calculate the uh, reflectivity. So for glass, if you put the values, you will get uh, R is equal to 0 0.035. Okay. Meanwhile, for lead oxide, you will get around 0 0.198. So because of having higher uh, value of uh, reflectivity, okay. So, lead oxide is therefore more reflective, which gives the ornamented value. So, if you have, um, I think, higher reflective value, so you know that uh, it has uh, more reflectivity. So, glass, you know that glass, if you penetrate glass, I mean, it, it will appear like clear. It doesn't give any color right? or ornamented value as compared to uh, a glass that have uh, maybe dope with lead outside. Okay. All right. So, selected lights adsorption in semiconductors. So, adsorption of light of frequency nu by electron transition occurs if H nu is bigger than gap energy or band gap energy. Examples of photons energy, blue light, will have uh, H nu values around 3.1 EV. Meanwhile, for red light, it will have a lower EV 
value or hash new value. If the band gap is lower than 1.8, so all lights will be absorbed. Okay, so material is considered as opaque. If the gap energy is bigger than 3.1, so there will be no light absorption. Material is transparent and colorless. And if it is actually located in between 1.8 and 3.1, so the material have a partial light absorption, so material is colored. Or maybe we, we can call this as translucent. Okay, so to differentiate between opaque, transparent, and translucent, it is actually by looking at the gap energy that it produces. So if the H nu value or the energy, yeah, the energy that we see just now, E is equal to H nu or equals to HC over lambda, if this value is actually um, lower than 1.8 EV, so this is actually opaque. So opaque means that all are absorbed. Meanwhile, if it is bigger than 3.1 EV, then this is transparent. Meaning that uh, there's no light absorption. And finally, if the energy is in between 1.8 and 3.1, then it will be partially absorbed. So this is actually for translucent. Okay. All right. So skate again. Okay? Moving on to the uh, relationship between absorption and energy gap. So it's always related with slightly what we have learned on electrical properties. Okay. So for metals, uh, if you still remember, okay, uh, saya nak tanya lah. If you still remember the conduction for metals, what sort of um, or what types of conduction that we can get for modes of uh, conduction for metals? Um, Crystal. Crystal, are you there? Crystal Chong Jia E. Yes, doctor. Okay, so if I ask you, uh, for metals, if you still remember in electrical properties, eh? so what, I mean, uh, modes of, um, I think, uh, conduction that it can produce? If you still remember. Krista? Yeah. The intrinsic Intrinsic and extrinsic conduction. <laughs> from... That one is actually semiconductivity. It's okay. I mean, uh, all right. So, um, all right. For metal, actually the energy band, uh, I think conduction could be either in partial band or full, fully band, fully bonded. Uh, if you still remember, eh, please check back. Okay. So that is why, I mean, like in this case, um, you didn't see any gap, eh? like EG. So the valence band and also the conduction band is just overlap with each other. Okay? Right. Meanwhile, for semiconductors, we know that uh, the valence band and the conduction band have a gap. So what is actually the, the, the uh, values of uh, gap energy for semiconductors. Uh, if you still remember um, Balkis, Hanani. Balkis. Balkis, ada Balkis. No, Balkis is not there. Um, Nurul Nadia. Nurul Nadia. Ah, Nurul Nadia, berapa value uh, gap energy 
offer me energy for semiconductor. I don't remember that thing. <laughs> ah, nasib baik ada penyelamat. Natra, nasib baik Natra selamatkan. Okay, Natra put in the chat box. This actually should be less than 2 EV. Okay, so energy gap should be less than 2 EV. Ah. And then for uh, maybe for uh, insulator, we know that it is greater than 2 EV. Okay. So similarly for uh, dielectric intrinsic and uh, extrinsic, same. Eh? We have like EG value around 2 EV. Okay. Right. So for extrinsic, we could have either P type or N type because we have donor or acceptor. Okay. So that is why you have uh, these things. Eh? You have like uh, donor, you have like free electrons, free electrons. Acceptor, you have free holes. Okay. So please look, I mean, back in chapter, uh, I think previous chapter on electrical properties. Eh? Okay. So, um, Another thing, interestingly, in optical properties is on photoconduction. Okay. Uh, photoconduction, I think the simplest example that I can uh, chat with you guys is solar cell. Have you seen about, I mean, have you seen a solar cell? I'm sure you have. So, you might thinking, like, how does solar cells work? Because actually, solar cell works when it actually absorbs light. There's a, I mean, a source, which is light, eh, coming from the light. And then uh, the material like indium, titanium oxide or whatsoever, eh, solar panels that will actually absorb uh, the energy. And then actually it will be translated. It, it will actually give a conduction. And this conduction will give, I mean, like uh, produce a free electrons. And when you have a free electrons, then this cause your solar cell to function. That is why, I mean, a solar cell can light, I mean, can give electricity okay so photoconduction in semiconductors involve the absorption of a stimulus by exciting electrons from the valence band to the conduction band okay rather than dropping back to their valence band to cause emission the excited electron carries a charge through an electrical circuit so if you remember the examples that i said to you guys before i mean like um for, I mean, uh, glow in the dark material, eh? glow in the dark. It absorbs the light, and then after that, if you stop, I mean, if you go into dark, then it will actually release the energy. You will see the light. Okay, so it, the release of energy actually uh, the, from the electron from the conduction band goes back into the valence band, and when it goes back, okay, actually it emits uh, the reflective light. Okay. But for solar cell, rather than actually it will uh, give like light or maybe a reflective index, uh, I think, effect. What happens is that the free electron actually uh, produces, I mean, enough charge, eh, enough current eh, to actually give uh, electrical properties. So this is actually, um, I think, a, a, a simple mechanism that you can see a lot in a solar cell. Okay, so another part that I think I literally touch a bit uh, with you guys just now is on like glow in the dark, eh? photoluminescence, luminescence, and maybe uh, you you will see after this uh, uh, fluoro fluorescence. Eh? Okay, all right. So luminescence is actually the ability of the material to re-emit light. Uh, so glow in the dark actually have this luminance, uh, luminescence uh, properties. Okay. Material that absorb light at one frequency and re-emit it at another at the lower frequency. So what happens is that the trap donor or acceptor states introduced by the impurity or the defense. Okay, so most of the uh, luminescence material uh, could be N-type or P-type semiconductors. Okay, all right. So for luminescence, we can categorize it into different things. Okay. If the residence time in the trap state is longer than 10 power of uh, minus 8 seconds, then this is actually considered as 
phosphorescence. Okay, if it is actually uh, re-emit the light at a short residence time, lower than 10 power of minus 8 second, very short time, it is called fluorescence. Okay, right. so the one that actually produce a longer uh, duration to re-emit the light, we call it as phosphorescence. If it is actually released or uh, re-emit the light shortly, okay, so uh, this one we categorize it as fluorescence. Examples, toy that glow in the dark. So charge toy by exposing them into light. Re-emission of light over time. This is actually phosphorescence material. Okay, so this is also part of the important things eh, in uh, optical properties. Uh, and this always I can consider as one of the important, uh, how to say, uh, maybe questions uh, in optical properties. I can ask you like to discuss or to differentiate between different types of uh, luminescence uh, properties or optical properties, uh, luminescence, fluorescence, and phosphorescence. So you need to understand based on their energy band and also uh, the reasons or the criteria that cause them to be classed as uh, fluorescence or phosphorescence. As we know, luminescence occur when the excited electron remain in higher energy level only briefly. When the electron drop back to the valence band, the photons are emitted. Luminescence occur when the photons have a wavelength in the visible spectrum. In metals, there is no energy gap, so luminescence does not occur. Okay. Phosphorescence, when all the excited electron drop back into the valence band, and the corresponding photons are emitted within a very short time, less than 10 power of minus 8 seconds after the stimulus is reduced or removed, then this is categorized as fluorescence. And finally, for phosphorescence, materials that have an impurity that introduce a donor level within the electron gap, the excited electrons first drop into the donor level and trap. So when the stimulus is removed, okay, electron in the uh, in the gaps, eh, we can uh, tap eh, in the gaps gradually escape and emits light over some additional period of time. So this occurs when the photons are emitted over a period of time due to the donor traps in the energy gap. Okay. All right. So the clear difference between the fluorescence and phosphorescence is the residence time eh, that the light has been re-emitted. So short time fluorescence, longer time phosphorescence. And if there is no light at all, it is actually luminescence. And luminescence normally occur for metals because we know that metals actually uh, have this partial or overlapping uh, energy band gap. Uh, so that is why you don't have band gap eh, as compared to fluorescence and phosphorescence. Fluorescence and phosphorescence normally, as I said, is semiconductors. Eh? It has an impurity. Okay. So far, is it okay? Any problem? Any question? Right. So we are moving on to uh, so-called fiber optics. So these days, people are using fiber optics to replace wires. I guess maybe you've heard about uh, fiber optics when you are using internet. Eh? So fiber optic technology eh? that can actually give you more uh, up to, uh, like database or whatsoever. Eh? More information can be transferred. So uh, the idea of a fiber optic actually impose the uh, optical properties of a material. In recent years, it's become apparent that uh, fiber optics are steadily replacing copper wire as an appropriate means of communication uh, signal transmission. A fiber optic system is similar to the copper system that fiber optics is replacing. The difference between uh, fiber optic is that it uses light paths to transmit information down uh, to the fiber lane instead of using electrical paths to transmit information down to the copper line. So light paths move easily 
down the fiber optic line because of the principle that is known as the total internal reflection. This principle of a total internal reflection stated that when the angle of incident exceeds the critical value, light cannot get out from the glass. Instead, it will bounce in the, uh, in the system. So in this case, maybe you've seen um, a, a fiber optic like this. So fiber optic, I think, a normal uh, light. Eh? Uh, so if you have a fiber optics, you can try this. You just put a torch light at one end and another end, you will see there's light. Okay, right. So uh, what happens is that you have a, a light pulse eh? uh, that uh, actually will transmit the information. It will be reflected into the wire. So that is why if you your fiber optic wire is bending or whatsoever, then there's no problem. If, let's say, it is a copper wire, if it's, it is bent or uh, maybe uh, a long wire, then it will actually cause a so-called resistance, electrical resistance that we've learned before this. But for fiber optic, there's no, I think, uh, I think uh, resistance, resistivity, but it's just, I think, reflections that occurs. So in... Uh, I think fiber optics, you might see these um, things. Eh? Uh, normally, it is coated, uh, it has a, a cable jacket and it has a strengthening fiber uh, to make it more flexible. It has a coating to make it, um, I think, resistive to any chemicals or whatsoever. And you have a cladding and finally the core. So the core is actually the fiber optics wire. And this is actually the uh, main system, how fiber optic works. So you have a source, okay, a light source that goes into the transmitter. So it will actually uh, translate eh, the information into light eh, transmission. And then after that, it goes into the fiber optic cables. And after that, it will goes into the receiver and finally uh, goes into the user. In electrical paths, you see, I mean, uh, uh, electrical system, you have a uh, electrical paths that converts the electrical lights. Okay, uh, so in this case, uh, if let's say that we are having, I mean, like we are using computers or so all these actually electrical things, stuff, right? So we use fiber optics. So what happened that the electrical pulse will be converted into uh, light, okay, light pulse. And then after that, uh, it will be transmitted into the fiber optics and then it goes into the receiver. And then after that, it will be translated back into the electrical pulse. So elements of the photonic system for transmitting information involve a laser or LED to generate photons from an electrical signals, optical fiber to transmit the beams of photons efficiently, and LED receiver to convert the photon back into the electrical signal. All right. So these are a few things regarding on the advantages of the fiber optic system. These are actually also important things that you need to memorize. Um, I think favorite question to ask the advantages of fiber optics, right? right? So the advantages of fiber optic, it can actually carry much information as compared to wire right? and deliver it greatly fidelity than either copper wire or coaxial cable. Fiber optic cables can support much higher data rates and at a greater distance. Okay? The fiber is totally immune to virtually any kinds of interference, including lightning, and will not okay, conduct electricity. So it is safe. You can actually touch it. So if you are using wire, uh, that's like electrical uh, current that flows into it. So there's a I mean, possibility that it can cause a shock uh, or I mean, like uh, uh, interference with lightning or whatsoever. As the basis uh, fiber is made from glass, it is not corroded. So it doesn't use a metal as a medium, but it just use a, a glass and it is not affected by corrosion and most other chemicals. So since the only carrier in the fiber is light, there is no possibility that it will spark from a broken fiber, unlike wires or cables. Fiber optic cables are virtually unaffected by outdoor atmospheric condition, allowing them to be lashed directly to phone poles or existing electrical cables without concern for external signal pickup. Right. So this is actually 
the schematic of a fiber optic based communication system. Okay, so we have a message eh, that goes into modulator, and this modulator goes into the carrier source. Carrier source goes to the channel coupler. Okay, finally it will be transmitted. Okay, you have a, a optical amplifier. Okay, repeater or optical amplifier again, and finally it goes into the fiber optics. You have a detector, amplifier, and processing. Then finally you have the message output. Okay, so I think lastly we are going to look at colors for non-metals. Okay, so this is actually part of uh, optical properties as well. So colors are determined by the distribution of uh, wavelength. Okay, so we know that um, color produced when it actually transmitted light and re-emitted of light from electron transition will produce color. For example, cadmium sulfide that have a gap energy of 2.4 eV, it actually absorbs higher energy uh, of a visible light, blue, violet, and it actually transmits colors that is actually uh, lower uh, energy value like red, orange, and also yellow. Other example is ruby or sapphire. Okay. Uh, sapphire plus with um, chromium oxide. So sapphire is transparent and colorless. We're having a EG value of more than 3.1. So of, obviously it doesn't have color. Okay. By adding chromium oxide, what happens is that it alters the band gap. Okay. Blue and orange or yellow green light will be absorbed and red color will be transmitted. And as a result, you'll see ru ruby yeah? uh, color uh, in uh, uh, red color. Okay, so I guess that's it for uh, optical properties chapter. Very short one. The I think the most important thing is uh, how to calculate reflectivity, yeah? uh, the reflectance, yeah? obviously, uh, energy uh, of a photon. Okay, E is equal to HV uh, or HC of one uh, lambda. And the other thing is the difference between uh, the luminescence. Yeah? Uh, you have like photoluminescence, uh, sorry, uh, phosphorescence and also fluorescence. What's the, the difference? This actually depends on the uh, residence time eh, of the re-emitted light. And I think lastly is on the fiber optics. Okay, so that is why I guess to conclude today's lecture, uh, we have looked into the definition of transparent, translucent and opaque. Okay, uh, optical property for non-metals, obviously if uh, the energy gap is lower than 1.8 so this actually will uh, absorption will all occur and if actually is bigger than 3.1 okay uh, you have a transparent eh? uh, transparent and if it is actually in between 1.8 to 3.1 then you have translucent so other importance in optical uh, application devices is luminescence photoconductivity for example a like solar cell eh? Solar panels, eh? light emitting diodes, LED, solar cells, um, uh, lasers, and fiber optics. Okay. So, yeah, I guess that actually wraps up the um, uh, optical properties uh, chapter. So, inshallah, next week, uh, Monday, we will start the last chapter, chapter 11 on corrosion. I think later today, I will upload the uh, notes. Okay. So, you guys. Okay. So, I think uh, you can write on attendance. I will stay back if you guys have any questions regarding on anything. And please be informed that your exams eh, have been finalized. It will be on 17th of February. 17th is actually Thursday morning, eh? 9 until uh, 12 p.m. Okay, So we will conduct it online uh, using uh, Webex. Uh, but I guess maybe overall, uh, I will give a briefing regarding on exams uh, during your, uh, I think, uh, study uh, week. Eh? During your study week, I will do some tutorial to discuss about your quiz, your assignments and whatsoever. So I will also explain about your exams, I mean, the procedures and everything. Right. So if there's no question, then I'd like to thank everyone. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Uh, for today's Friday's class. Uh, with that, hopefully to see you next week, uh, Monday. Uh, thank you very much and Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So thank you everyone.